Good morning. Friends, welcome in the name of the living God. Welcome on this Lord's Day. Welcome to this time of fellowship and of Sabbath rest and worship. Welcome to one and all. But if you will, brothers and sisters, on this Lord's Day and in this time of Sabbath rest, let us call ourselves to worship. The call to worship is taken from Psalm 77. Listen for what the Spirit says to you. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Friends, let us worship God. As we stand in body or spirit, we'll sing together hymn number 466, Take My Life and Let It Be. Father in their time of trouble. 
and let it please you to raise them up in due time and to give them patience and grace. And so in this sacred silence, we intercede for that need. We raise up to you that concern that is near to our heart today. Especially we remember Jackie, Thomas, Sarah, Levi, William, and Diane, and Mike. And so all these prayers and those unspoken we make in the name of Christ who taught us to pray say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jordan. 
But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Friends, thus far, the reading of God's word.
all of us, I think, have family heirlooms that are passed down from generation to generation. One family had an old vase that they kept displayed on their mantelpiece, the mantelpiece over their fireplace. Uh, when a mother of that family came home from shopping one afternoon, her teenage daughter said, Mom, you know that vase that has been handed down from generation to generation? The mother said, yeah, yes, dear, what about it? And the, the teenage daughter said, well, I think this generation just dropped it. <laughs> um, the the backstory, the backdrop, the background to today's scripture lesson is, I think, the ministry of the the prophet Elijah, as we find the account of that ministry in First and Second Kings in the Old Testament. Elijah lived in the 6th, 6th century B.C. and had as a focus of his prophetic ministry, in particular opposition to uh, Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab, the king of Israel, and, and Jezebel, his foreign wife, who hold him toward the worship of foreign gods and push uh, syncretism in Israel, the, the mixing and mingling of the worship of the God of Israel and uh, other gods like Baal and Asherah. Elijah tried to call that couple and the people of Israel and Judah too repentance to the worship of Israel's God alone. So before we arrive at the events narrated in today's scripture lesson, Elijah had challenged 450 prophets of Baal and 400 priest prophets of Asherah to prove which God was real, which could be trusted and believed in. Elijah confronted the people and said, How long will you go limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. So the priests and prophets of Baal and Asherah piled uh, wood on top of a rock altar, made animal sacrifices. And the scripture account has it that they cried out from morning till noon for Baal to ignite the wood pile, to burn it up, to prove that he was God. And nothing happened. And it's an instance of uh, trash talking. Elijah's on the sidelines saying, perhaps you're not shouting loud enough for Baal to hear you. Perhaps he's on a trip. Perhaps he's indisposed in the outhouse. And he mocks them from the side. And then Elijah takes his own wood pile, his own altar of rock and wood and animal sacrifices. He has that doused, saturated with water. There's water in a, in a moat around the wood pile, around the altar. And Elijah makes a simple prayer. And again, the scripture account has it the fire falls from heaven, burns up the sacrifices, the water saturated wood, licks up the water uh, that's around the altar, burns up even the rocks. And then rain begins falling from the sky, breaking a long drought and the famine that accompanied it. And then in conformity with Israel's law, Elijah calls for the death of the false prophets. Neither Ahab or Jezebel are, are very pleased with that outcome, they believe one good turn deserves another. As her own life and reign come to a close, they have just about orders Elijah's death. But Elijah is not in the mood to oblige that death sentence, and he flees into the wilderness, into the hill country. And then on the run and in hiding, Elijah is feeling very sorry for himself. God meets him and speaks to Elijah. Elijah hears the voice of God, the new revised standard translates the Hebrew, uh, that Elijah hears the voice of God from the sound of sheer silence. The King James Version rendered the Hebrew uh, as, as Elijah hearing God in a still, small voice. And Elijah complains to God that while he has been faithful to the God of Israel, he has been alone, and now he's threatened. For all of his work, it's all, he's by himself, he's despairing. And God tells Elijah that he is not alone. In fact, there are 7,000 others in Israel who have not bowed the knee to the false god Baal or submitted themselves to the rule of Ahab and Jezebel. 
And then God tells Elijah to anoint Elisha as his successor. As the account runs, that succession doesn't take place immediately, but happens in, in the course of, of due time. Elijah meets Elisha, and in one incident places his mantle, his cloak, his garment on Elisha. It's a poignant moment, it's a symbolic action by which Elijah signals that Elisha will replace him, will succeed him. And they journey together, Elijah and Elisha, in peripatetic fashion here and there. And finally the time arrives for Elijah's ministry to conclude. And that is where we kind of pick up the story today. Elijah is told by God to go on to Bethel. Elisha is insistent that he make the journey with Elijah, and he accompanies Elijah on to Bethel to the bank of the Jordan River. At the Jordan, like Moses parting the Red Sea, or like Joshua separating the waters of the Jordan when crossing into the Promised Land, Elijah takes his mantle, his garment, and strikes the river with it. And then he and Elijah cross the river, the Jordan River, on dry ground. Elijah asks Elisha what he needs before he leaves. Elijah asks for a double portion of Elijah's prophetic spirit, his power. Elijah says that if Elisha sees him leave, sees him caught up to heaven, his request will be granted. Elijah is caught up to heaven by a chariot of fire, by horses of fire, in a whirlwind. It's a sort of rather unusual scene, dramatic, evocative, striking. And in the midst of it, Elijah's mantle falls to the ground. And Elisha bends over and picks it up, picks up the mantle, takes up the mantle of his mentor, of his exemplar. Elisha indeed witnesses Elijah's departure, and so the promise is made good. Elisha does inherit a double portion of the prophetic spirit of Elijah. So then it's quiet on the riverbank along the Jordan River. Elijah is gone, and he, Elisha, having picked up the mantle of his mentor, is now on his own, standing by the river. Elisha strikes the water himself, and the river parts for him. Our scripture lesson ends this morning with the Jordan River parting for Elisha as he crosses over to the other side to begin his own story. Elisha will have a ministry like Elijah's, but will have will perform even double the miracles that accompanied Elijah's ministry. So the question is put to us, I think, each Sunday, what, what might we learn from the, the Bible story? How might we apply it? What does it mean for us? So I'm a, by way of a devotional thought, perhaps you're able to look back uh, at a, a grandparent or a parent, a teacher, a, a mentor, and discover in your own life uh, how you have tried, maybe, consciously or unconsciously to emulate them, how, how their example or some lesson that they imparted to you, how you've integrated that into your own life. It may be a figure from history that you modeled some behavior after, or who offered a particular lesson that inspired you, something that you sought to apply in, in business or in relationships or in your personal conduct. Those are ways we might, like Elisha, have picked up someone's mantle. Elisha inherited Elijah's ministry. Elisha followed after someone else. He picked up the mantle of his mentor. Of course, that's where we get the turn of phrase from, to, to take up or pick up the mantle. Elisha picked up the mantle of his mentor, but... As the story ends, he is clearly beginning his own journey. He's undertaking his own calling. Elisha, 
or the similarity of their names, Elisha is not Elijah. Just so we can only be and become who are we individually are called to be and to become. While we have our examples and our role models and our mentors, well, we have those who came before us who encouraged or inspired us, we must be true to who God has made us individually to be. We, we can't be somebody else. We are each of us a prepared personality for this moment in time with our individual histories and experiences, our unique gifts, our strengths, and our weaknesses. As we are every day, we stand together on the riverbank of today, ready to cross over into tomorrow, into God's future. And so we might try to follow in someone's footsteps, but the, the moment will come when, if we are true to our unique calling, we make some footprints of our own. So again, by way of a devotional thought, by way of an application of today's scripture lesson, who, who have you, or have you, adopted as an example, an exemplar, a model, somebody in your approach to work, or marriage, or church, or life in general? Can you think about, can you see that person? And like Elisha, how have you picked up the mantle of someone else? It's, it's worthwhile to think about. It may be helpful to reflect on, to consider who you are, how you came to be the person you are, and who God is yet calling you to become. That may be one way, one place the scripture passage takes us today. And in a second, application might be, very briefly, have, have you been or are you an Elijah to one Elisha or another? Cherished values, a vision for what the world might be, special passions or interests, spiritual convictions and beliefs, all might be a part of your own mantle. Are you trying to pass on that mantle, that, that legacy, that set of values or convictions? to somebody else? And, and what is it you may be trying to pass on to a son or a daughter, a, a grandchild, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, someone in the community? And what is it and how? How can you best pass on that mantle? We each have been known and, and loved by God from eternity past and have been born with a purpose as a part of God's sovereign plan. So may we be ready and able to share ourselves with others. May we be an Elijah to some Elisha, just as we have been shaped and blessed in our own lives with examples and mentors. Amen.
yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord now and evermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Thank mm -hmm. you.